Hello there lads and lasses, I'm Joshua, also known as the Scottish Koala. World War II saw a huge number of troops, tech and tanks serve across a wide variety of theatres, each with their own unique stories and use cases. With that in mind, I've teamed up with the lads here at the Tank Encyclopedia to talk about one such case in particular, the Panzer 38T, and its service with Hungarian forces as the T-38, for the harsh battles of the Eastern Front. If you enjoyed this article, then remember to browse all the amazing content from the Tank Encyclopedia, or you can find more from me at my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Scottish Koala, where I talk about some of the science and technology behind military vehicles of the Cold War, as well as play some video games featuring those vehicles, and look at the real-life inspiration behind them. Now though, join me as we dive into Eastern Europe in 1942. During World War II, the Hungarians were one of Germany's allies which had a significant domestic production of armoured vehicles. While these locally produced vehicles were fine by the standards of the early war, unfortunately for the Hungarians, by the time they were fielded in large numbers, they were already obsolete. To bolster their allies' firepower, in 1942 the Germans supplied the Hungarians with a selection of armoured vehicles, including over a hundred Panzer 38T tanks. The Hungarians officially signed the Tripartite Pact to join the Axis forces on the 27th of September 1940. By the time of the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, the Hungarian army had the largest armoured force of all the Germans' allies on this front. By the end of 1941, the Hungarians fielded light tanks which were of little use against the newer Soviet tanks. To rebuild its shattered force, the Hungarian High Command tried to implement the Huber II military plan. This plan involved the formation of two new units, the 1st and 2nd Armoured Divisions. Despite being unprepared and having suffered heavy losses, including much of its armoured formations, the Hungarian High Command was hard pressed by the Germans to send additional forces to the Eastern Front. The Hungarian High Command chose to send the 2nd Army, which consisted of 9 light divisions and the 1st Field Armoured Division. As there was a general lack of modern equipment, especially tanks, the formation of the 1st Field Armoured Division was too slow. Despite German promises of modern equipment, the Hungarians were instead supplied with 102 to 108, depending on the source, Panzer 38T aus from F and G, known in Hungarian service as the T-38 but also classified as a medium tank, and 22 better armoured Panzer IV aus from F1s, classified as heavy tanks in Hungarian service. Among the acquired T-38s, some 38 were command vehicles with better radio equipment, few 2 radio receivers which were standard for all T-38s, and few 5 transmitters, and reduced secondary armament of one machine gun. The Germans also provided the Hungarian crews with the necessary training at the Wunsdorf Military School. In Hungarian service, the T-38 received three digit numbers, which were painted on the turret rear side. In addition, on the hull, a slightly modified German Balkan cruise was painted. The difference was in the colour of the central cross, which was painted green instead of the original black, on a red background. The 1st Field Armoured Division had, in total, 89 T-38s and all 22 of the Panzer IVs, which were allocated to the 30th Tank Regiment. The 1st Armoured Reconnaissance Battalion of this division was equipped with 14 Kassaba armoured cars and 17 Tol D light tanks, with four rebuilt Tolly tanks being used for medical support roles. In addition, there was the 51st Armoured Autocannon Battalion, also known as the 51st Tank Hunter Battalion, which was equipped with 18 to 19 Nimrod anti tank slash anti aircraft vehicles. The Hungarian 2nd Army was tasked with supporting the German left flank advancing towards Stalingrad. The TNH LT VZ-38 tank was developed and built by the Czech CKD company in the second half of the 1930s. Production of the VZ-38 began in late 1938, but by the time of the German annexation of Czech territory, not a single tank had been taken over by the Czech army. Germany captured many brand new VZ-38 tanks and in May 1939, a delegation was sent to the CKD factory to examine their operational potential. The Germans were so impressed with this tank that they were quickly introduced into Wehrmacht service under the name Panzerkampfwagen 38T, or simply Panzer 38T. The CKD factory was completely taken over for the needs of the German army under the new name BMM. The Panzer 38T was built in relatively large numbers, saw combat action from Poland to the end of the war, 
and was considered an effective tank for its class. But from late 1941 on, it became obvious that it was becoming obsolete as a first-line combat tank. The Panzer 38T chassis, on the other hand, was mechanically reliable and highly suitable for use for other purposes, a fact which the Germans exploited to the maximum. Over 100 Panzer 38T as from F and G tanks, which had stronger 50mm armour, were supplied by the Germans to their Hungarian allies in an attempt to rebuild their armoured formation. The majority of the Hungarian Second Army was engaged in the advance towards the city of Stalingrad, Operation Blau, in May 1942. The 1st Armoured Division was not involved in these initial combat operations, as its elements did not reach the front line until June and July. The reason for this delay was the general lack of fuel and transport vehicles. The 1st Armoured Division's initial position was in the Yurov pokorovka storozovoya area on the western banks of the Don River. Its first orders were to crush a Soviet bridgehead defended by the 130th Tank Brigade. The Hungarian attack, which began on the 18th of July, was spearheaded by elements of the 30th Tank Regiment and 51st Tank Hunter Battalion. The Hungarian Panzer IVs managed to destroy a Soviet T-34, followed by more Soviet tank losses, mostly T-34s and American-supplied M3 Stuart tanks. Being lightly armoured, the M3 Stuarts could be destroyed by the T-38's 3.7cm guns. A Hungarian correspondent who was in one of the T-38s during this offensive later wrote down in his memoirs, We carried on and entered the light of a burning farm at just the worst moment. A stack stalled and approached us. As the straw fell behind, a Soviet tank appeared in front of us. It was a medium tank, an M3 Stuart tank, firing two shots at us. None of them got us, we were still alive. But our second shot did hit it. As I spied out of the turret, I couldn't see any Hungarian tank losses. But my joy was too early. My headphones asked for a doctor. Tank number 591 got hit, we need a doctor. I could see through my binoculars that a major from the staff reached the damaged vehicle and lifted the injured men over into his tank under heavy fire. Quite a few enemy tanks opened fire on them, and we tried to cover them as well as we could from the distance. We were much relieved when the doctor's tank arrived and that the damaged tank hadn't fallen into enemy hands. It didn't catch fire either, and was towed away. The Soviet bridgehead was eventually destroyed by the afternoon. The Soviet losses were 21 tanks, the majority of which were destroyed by the Panzer IVs. The Nimrod vehicles destroyed 6 tanks and the remaining 3 were destroyed by the T-38s. During the Soviet retreat, their losses climbed to 35 tanks, with at least 4 captured M3 light tanks. The Hungarian losses were minimal, with only 2 damaged but recovered T-38 tanks. Of the 4 captured M3s, one was sent back to Hungary for evaluation and the remaining were used to tow the damaged T-38s. By the end of July, the Hungarians were confronted by the 260th and the 261st tank battalions, both belonging to the 130th Tank Brigade. The 260th Tank Battalion had organised two centres of resistance. The first, supported with three M3 and five T60 tanks, was located 1.2 kilometres northwards from the forest which lies 2 kilometres north from the village of Medjinevo. It was intended to support the actions of the Composite Battalion of the 24th Motor Rifle Brigade. The second point of resistance was supported with seven T-34s positioned in the northwestern outskirts of Medjinevo, ready to provide fire support in the direction of Tichiha, Selyavno. The total armoured strength of the 260th Tank Battalion was 3 M3, 5 T60 and 7 T34 tanks. The 261st Tank Battalion had its 10 T60s concentrated at the northeastern edge of the wood, 2 kilometres westwards from the village of Davyadovka. Another 17 T-60 tanks were concentrated in the woods 500 metres to the southeast from the village of Durkino. In total, this unit had 27 T-60 tanks. Some elements of the 1st Armoured Division were engaged in the battle for Storozhevoya on the 10th of August. There, a poorly prepared attack led to the loss of 10 T-38s, of which 3 could not be recovered. Interestingly, these three abandoned Hungarian T-38 tanks, known by the Soviets as the 38T, would be evacuated during the night of the 10th and 11th of August by the Soviet 260th Tank Battalion. The 1st Armoured Division's next action was to attempt to stop the Soviet attack near the city of Korotoyak. For this, elements of the 1st Armoured Division were sent to support the Hungarian defensive. 
The battle against Soviet forces resumed on the 15th of August when the Hungarian forces managed to inflict on the Soviets the following losses. Three knocked out M3 Stuarts, three Bond and three knocked out T60s, one knocked out 38T, reused by the Soviets, and one T-34, which took severe damage including a jammed turret and bent gun barrel. The Hungarians also lost a Panzer IV and at least three T-38s. One of these T-38s was destroyed by a Soviet sergeant V. Paganis, who after his 45mm anti-tank gun was destroyed, took a few AT grenades and jumped under the tank, blowing himself and the Hungarian vehicle up. Two more Soviet tanks were destroyed by the end of the day, with the loss of three additional T-38s. One was destroyed by a Soviet T-34, and the remaining two, ironically, by German anti-tank fire. In the following days of harsh battle for Karotoyak, the Hungarian losses increased to 55 T-38s and 15 Panzer IVs. Of these numbers, some 35 vehicles were under maintenance and repairable. The 1st Armoured Division was eventually pulled back from Karotoyak due to increased losses. The Germans provided the Hungarians with four Panzer IV Ausfram F2 tanks fitted with a longer 7.5cm gun. By the end of August, the 1st Armoured Division total strength was around 85 T-38s, 22 Panzer IVs and at least five Toldi tanks. At the start of September, the Hungarians made another attempt to crush the Soviet positions around Yurov Karotoyak. The attack began on the 9th of September, supported by the German 168th Infantry Division and the 201st Assault Gun Detachment. As the Soviet positions were well defended, the attack was proceeding at a slow pace. A Hungarian tank battalion was sent to support the attack on the Soviet positions at Storozhevoye, which were defended by T-34 tanks. During the fighting, a T-38 commanded by Sergeant Janos Shizmadia came across a T-34 tank that was attacking the German rear positions. Sergeant Zizmadia reacted quickly and fired at the T-34 at close range. The T-38's 3.7cm armour pacing round managed to pierce the T-34's rear armour and the tank exploded. This was one of the few occasions where the T-38's weak gun managed to destroy a T-34. By the end of the day, Sergeant Janos Zizmadia, encouraged by this success, managed to personally destroy two enemy bunkers with hand grenades but also to capture at least 30 demoralised Soviet soldiers. For his action, he was awarded the Great Silver Medal for bravery. After two days of hard fighting, the Axis forces finally managed to capture the entirety of Storozhevoye on the 11th of September, with the further loss of two Hungarian T-38s. The Axis attacked the Soviet bunker positions in the Otichia hamlet. Because they were too well defended, the first attack was repulsed, with many Hungarian tanks being damaged or put out of action. The next day, the Axis forces attacked from the other direction. As the heavy Soviet bunkers were immune to the 3.7cm guns, the crews would often destroy these bunkers by using hand grenades. The attack eventually succeeded and the German 168th Infantry Division set up a defensive position there. The Soviets made a counter-attack supported by heavy KV-1 and T-34 tanks. The Hungarian tanks were ordered to resist this attack. The following engagement was mostly one-sided, as the Hungarian 3.7cm guns proved useless during this combat. The desperate situation was later described by Corporal Mocha in his diary. We pushed ahead until we reached the headquarters of the German infantry. A Russian tank, KV-1C, appeared ahead of us from the wheat field and opened heavy fire on us. Yet Konrad Nyergis, our gunner, was quick to answer. He managed to gun superbly and we watched his moves trustfully. We retired a few metres and so did the enemy. Neil just sent one tank grenade after another. He shook his head, something must have been wrong. He kept on loading and firing and we were stifling from the smoke. It seemed that we were unable to break the armour of that tank. Its thick and slanting skin resisted everything, thus all our efforts were in vain. Neil just stopped for a moment and took a deep breath. He was dripping with sweat. This helplessness was terrible. In the meantime, the enemy tank retired. We started to hope. I could hear a terrible detonation and felt as if I was rising. I was struggling desperately to stand up and open the roof, but my throat microphone's cord held me back. Helping hands rescued me from my imprisonment, pulling me out by the arm. I fell in front of the vehicle. I felt a burning pain at the back of my head, but I didn't pay any attention to it. The same KV-1 destroyed another T-38 which was nearby. 
By the end of the day, the Hungarian losses were extensive, and only 22 T-38s and 4 Panzer IVs were still operational. The Soviets lost 8 T-34 tanks, and 2 KV-1s were damaged. Between the 14th to the 16th of September, all Soviet counterattacks were repulsed with the losses of 18 T-34 and 6 KV-1 tanks. Some fell victim to Hungarian fire, but also to the firepower of German supporting assault guns. Nevertheless, on the 16th of September, the Hungarian 30th Tank Regiment had only 12 T-38s and 2 Panzer IVs operational. By October 1942, in order to reinforce their Hungarian allies, the Germans provided them with 10 Panzer III S from N tanks and 6 Panzer IV S from F2 and G. The next large engagement of the Hungarian armour with the Soviets happened on the 19th of October near Storosovoya. The Hungarian tankers managed to destroy four Soviet tanks. From that point on, the 1st Armoured Division was put into reserve for rest and refurbishment. In December, or September depending on the source, 1942, the Germans supplied the Hungarians with five Marder II vehicles and at least three more Panzer 38T Ausfilm C tanks. At the start of 1943, the Hungarian 1st Armoured Division was put under direct German command under the Kramer Corps. At that time, the total armoured strength of this unit consisted of 9 Panzer III S from N, 8 Panzer IV S from F2 and G, 8 Panzer IV S from F1, 41 remaining T-38s and the 5 Marder II tank destroyers. The Kramer Corps, besides the Hungarian Armoured Division, consisted of the 26th and 168th Infantry Divisions, the German 190th Assault Gun Detachment and 700th Armoured Detachment. The commander of the Kramer Corps was Major General Hans Kramer. In mid-January 1943, the Soviets launched an offensive against the Hungarian positions, and after heavy losses, forced them to retreat. The Soviet tanks caused chaos in the Hungarian lines. The German 700th Armoured Detachment, equipped with Panzer 38T tanks, was also decimated on the way. The Soviets then engaged the Hungarian 12th Field Artillery Regiment, which they destroyed, but the Soviets lost 9 tanks in the process. The low temperatures of minus 20 to minus 30 degrees C also caused important losses to the Hungarians. Nevertheless, the Soviets were forced to stop their attack due to significant tank losses. During the Soviet offensive, many T-38s were blown up by their crews due to a general lack of fuel and breakdowns. For example, the 1st Tank Brigade alone had to blow up 17 T-38 tanks. The fighting was extensive around the city of Alexeyevka, west of the Don River, which the Hungarian 1st Armoured Division, with the help of the German 559th Anti-Tank Battalion, were ordered to take back. The attack began on the 18th of January 1943, and after heavy fighting, Alexeyevka was taken by the Axis forces. The next day, the Soviets made a counterattack, which was repelled with the loss of a T-34, destroyed by a Marder II, and a T-60 destroyed by a Panzer IV. Despite their success, the Axis forces were forced to retreat out of Alexeyevka. On the 21st of January 1943, the Axis forces again managed to enter the western parts of the city of Alexeyevka, but the 1st Armoured Division had to retreat, and on the 25th of January, reached Novi Oskol. For the remainder of January and early February, the 1st Armoured Division fought many hard battles with the advancing Soviets. During the fighting around the city of Korocha, the last operational T-38 was lost. Without ammunition, it was attacked by two T-60s and one T-34. By the 9th of February, the 1st Armoured Division reached the River Donuts and eventually reached Kharkov. Due to extensive losses, this division had to be pulled back from the front. The last remaining operational vehicles were two Marder II tank destroyers. The remaining T-38s that managed to avoid destruction were mostly used in Hungary for crew training. They may have seen some more action during the Soviet advance towards Hungary by the war's end, but in any case, these were already obsolete. It appears that the Soviet 130th Tank Brigade, during their fighting with the Hungarian armed forces, managed to capture at least three T-38 tanks. The war diary of the Soviet 260th Tank Battalion stated that on the 9th of August 1942, the unit had 3 T-34, 3 M3 lights, and 15 T-60 tanks, 21 operational tanks in total. On the same day, the battalion took up a defensive position at the edge of the forest northwards from Hills 171-6 
and 195.5. By 1800 hours, the battalion, including tanks, was fully entrenched. Three T-34 tanks were allocated to defend the village of Medjinevo. On the next day, 10th of August, at 5.30 in the morning, the battle started with heavy shelling. At 0900, the enemy put into action 27 tanks, but after losing 16 of them, the enemy was forced to retreat. The 260th Tank Battalion reported no losses during this engagement. On the 10th of August 1942, the Axis forces advanced into the area Storozhevoya Hill 186-6. Multiple tank infantry attacks were repulsed. The 260th Tank Battalion, acting as a part of the 24th Motor Rifle Brigade, defended an area in the southwestern part of the forest to the west of the hamlet of Otichiha. As a result of the engagement, the 260th Tank Battalion reported one enemy tank knocked out and one burnt. Also, 25 enemy soldiers were reported as casualties. The report also noted that 1st Lieutenant Homenko, commander of the tank company of the 260th Tank Battalion, organised defence right, which eventually helped to hold the ground. The same day, 10th of August, the 1-130 MSPB or Motor Rifle Machine Gun Battalion took up a defensive position near the Hill 187-7 and also fought as a part of the 24th Motor Rifle Brigade. On the night of the 10th and 11th of August, the 260th Tank Battalion managed to evacuate from the battlefield three knocked out 38T tanks. Two of them were repaired during the next day and put into Soviet service. On the 13th of August, the 260th Tank Battalion had three T-34, three M3 Stuart, 15 T-60 and two captured 38T tanks. One of the 38Ts finished repair by 1800 on the same day. The Soviet forces on the 14th of August received a verbal order to move during the night and concentrate in the area southwest of the village of Goldaevka. The task was to advance in the direction of Hill 162 Goldaevka. The force allocated to that attack consisted of 1 T-34, 3 M3, 10 T-60 and the two captured 38Ts. On the next day, the 15th of August, at 0500, the 260th Tank Battalion arrived in the area of operations and reconnoitred it. At 0600, the battalion started to advance in the direction of Hill 162, keeping the line formation. After heavy fighting, the battalion commander reported that the enemy lost four anti-tank guns, three machine guns, two mortars, and at least 25 soldiers and officers. The 260th Battalion had lost two T-60 tanks, with one completely burned out. The second tank was recovered and repaired. The 260th Battalion managed to eventually capture Hill 162, but was later forced to retreat as it was lacking infantry support. Another attack started at 1530 hours. The battalion still possessed one damaged T-34, three M3, eight T-60, and one captured 38T. Again, the commander reported enemy losses as follows. Six anti-tank guns, two mortars, three cars, and up to a hundred enemy soldiers and officers. Soviet losses included at that time three knocked out M3, all later recovered, one knocked out 38T, and one destroyed T-60, which was left on the battlefield. In the following attack, despite having infantry support, Hill 162 was not captured and the Soviet forces fell back. At 1800 hours, the battalion withdrew from the battle. Its war diary mentioned another 138T destroyed and left on the battlefield, as well as stressed that T-60s don't fit to be used in the first line of attack. This information could be corroborated with the 130th Tank Brigade report. According to that document, on the 15th of August, the 260th Tank Battalion lost one of two operational 38T tanks during the first attack on Hill 162, which commenced at 0700. The second 38T was lost during the next attack, initiated at 1530, in order to recapture the same hill. Total claimed enemy losses at the end of the 15th of August were 12 AT guns, 3 cars, 4 mortars, 6 machine guns, and more than 160 men and officers. Total Soviet losses were 5 men and officers killed in action, 1 severely damaged T-34, 3 knocked out M3 Stuarts, 2 knocked out 38Ts, and 6 T-60, of which 3 burned and 3 were knocked out. On the 16th of August, the 260th Tank Battalion had 5 T-34s, 3 tanks in Medjinevo, 
and 12 T-60 tanks. Most of them did not take part in the attacks on the previous day. According to the 130th Tank Brigade report, on the 16th of August, the 260th Tank Battalion formed a tank company from remaining operational tanks. The company had 5 T-34s, 10 T-60s, 3 M3 Stuart light tanks and 138T. Three days later, the brigade still had 138T, but with a jammed turret. According to the 6th Army report dated from the 21st of September 1942, 138T, previously belonging to the 260th Tank Battalion, was to be allocated to the 3rd Barrier Troop Detachment, in essence an anti-retreat unit, which was stationed at Davidovska. In total, it seems that the Soviet units engaged in this area operated around 3 captured 38Ts captured from the Hungarian forces. While the 260th Tank Battalion had 3 38T tanks, only 2 were ever used. The fate of that last vehicle is unknown, but it was either unusable or more likely simply cannibalised to get spare parts. The T-38 provided the Hungarians with means to equip their shattered armoured forces after the hard battles of 1941. Over a hundred were acquired, but their performance was inadequate by the standards of 1942. While they did achieve some success, they simply did not have any chance against more modern Soviet armour. <laughs> 